Hi, hi, hi. I am in Hawaii, the big island, Kona Island, on a family vacation, but had to come here. I had to step away from the family and come and read the Psalms because this is what we do together, rain or shine, no matter where we are. And the waves, man, they're competing with me, but I like that kind of competition. Just majestic. They themselves are preaching. They're proclaiming God's word right behind me. I'm going to try and be really loud so you can hear me. We're in Psalm 59. Can you believe that? 59, 59. Here we are. We're not going to miss a week. So I wanted to make sure that we read this together. I didn't bring my Bible with me. I have my phone where I uh, made sure to have the Psalm, Psalm 59 here that we're going to read together. Whatever it takes, baby, this is how we do it. The reason I'm here is because my father decided that we were going to do a family gathering, a family vacation out here. And one of the reasons, or the big reason why he wanted to do that, why he wanted to be so generous in this way, is because he has beat cancer four times. That's a cheap way of saying that. God has healed him of cancer four times, four times. God has used my dad's body to proclaim his glory, to show himself off. When over and over they told him, no, you have this type of cancer or that type of cancer, and that's not good, and the prognosis is terrible, and people don't recover from that. His faith was strong, and God met him. God showed him that he could trust him through this. So four times he has proven the statistics wrong, the facts have turned, and the medical report was negated by God's word, by his blood, by God's healing power over my dad. So he said, you know what? Life is so short. We need to not take this for granted. We need to come together and spend time together. And man, this is the time that we need to, we need to really um, be aware of the goodness of God. Ah, isn't that glorious? I love it. Man, these waves are powerful. So I'm really thankful. I'm thankful for the way God has taken care of our family. I'm thankful for the way God has taken care of my dad and how he has healed him over and over. So that's why I can't stop. I cannot stop proclaiming his goodness. I cannot stop um, making sure that I'm committed. I committed to the Lord in doing this. So wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, baby, I'm gonna come to you and you stay committed. You stay committed. We're in Psalm 59. You see this pretty rose? Rose? It's not a rose. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but it's a flower. We went to the farmer's market this morning here at the island, and oh my gosh, these flowers. My um, daughters were with my dad and we got them these flowers. and said, if you're single, you put it on your right side, and if you're married, you put it on your left, of course. Ta -da. <laughs> but she said, wait, wait, wait. If there's a guy who comes your way <laughs> and he's pursuing you and you don't like him, put it on your right side and that will make him go away. I thought, okay, that's good protection. That's good, a good way of putting it. I thought that was silly. Here it is on my left side. I love it. The beautiful flower, beautiful Hawaii, beautiful background here for us. Let's get started. This psalm is powerful. It talks about the enemies that we have and David was strategic in the way he prayed. I don't know what's coming against you. For my dad, it was a disease. For my dad, it was the enemy attacking his body. He's always been a strong man. He was a Marine. He was a self-made man in, in every sense of the word before he met Jesus. He realized then that he realizes now that it was all God. But he worked hard. He put himself through school. He did so much. And he's a strong man. And then this came against him as he pursued God. So the enemy will use whatever tactics, whether it's a disease, whether affecting your relationships, whether affecting other things in your life, your finances, he will come at you and he will want to steal your joy. He wants to kill and steal and destroy the mission of God inside of you. Here, David's mission was to be the king of Israel. God had set him for such a time as this 
his lineage was going to bring forth Jesus. And there were so many enemies that wanted him dead. And so David was a man of God and he prayed and he prayed very strategically, very intentional. I wonder if we could take a lesson from this and pray the same way. Listen to this, man. Talk about the violent take of my storm. Watch this, okay? Let's look at this and hopefully I don't mess this up as I turn, navigate through my phone to get this out to you. But let's do this, okay? Nice and loud. Psalm 59, get your Bible out if you have it, please. If not, follow along with me. Let the words that I speak, let the words that I read out loud, man, may they wash your very soul. May they speak to you, may they minister to you right now. This is David as Saul was pursuing him hard and wanted him dead. Let's look at this. Psalm 59, rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from the, those who have come to destroy me. Rescue me from these criminals. Save me from these murderers. They have set an ambush for me. Fierce enemies are out there waiting, Lord. Though I have not sinned or offended them, I have done nothing wrong. Yet they prepare to attack me. Wake up, see what is happening and help me. O oh Lord God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, wake up and punish those hostile nations. Show no mercy to the wicked traitors. They come out at night snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. Listen to the filth that comes from their mouth. Their words are cut like swords. After all, you can hear after all you can hear us they sneer but lord you laugh at them you scoff at all the hostile nations you are my strength i wait for you to rescue me for you oh god are my fortress in his unfailing love my god stand with me he will my God will stand with me. He will let me look down in triumph on all my enemies. Don't kill them, for my people soon forget such lessons. Stagger them with your power and bring them to their knees. Oh Lord, our shield, because of the sinful things they say, because of the evil that is on their lips, let them be captured by pride. Hallelujah. Their curses and their lies. Destroy them in your anger. Wipe them out completely. Then the whole world will know that God reigns in Israel. My enemies come out at night snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. They scavenge for food, but go to, to sleep. And they go to sleep unsatisfied. But as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning, I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. Hallelujah. For you have been my refuge, a place of safety where I am in distress. Oh, my strength to you. I sing praises for you, oh God, are my refuge. The God who shows me unfailing love. Wow. Can you hear this behind me? It's so thunderous. I, I don't know if you even heard a single word I said because it's just competing with me and it is winning. But man, is it showing off the power of God. It is so powerful. It's like thunderous back here. It's amazing. Okay. So I'm going to put this down because I'm a hand talker. Oh gosh. I'm a hand talker. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. Did you see that? Did you see how strategic David was in the way he laid out things to God? Very, with, with so much intention, so much thought. So I, I think about that because sometimes we're like, well, God help me, God be with us. God, you know, very, very just simple. And it's okay, God hears everything. But I wonder if we use this strategic warfare, because David was a warrior. This is strategic warfare. 
if we begin to war in the heavenlies, if we begin to fight in the spirit like David did in a way that got God, God's attention, we need to do that. We need to speak over our children, speak over our marriages, speak over our bodies, speak over our finances, speak over our lives, our mission, the things that Satan is coming against, the enemy's coming against. And hey, the enemy is very real and he uses people all around us to discourage us, to bring us down, to speak words, you know, with not even meaning to. Look at the doctors. I mean, doctors for the most part, they don't go into medicine and practice years and years of medicine because they want to hurt somebody, because they want someone to die at their hand. No, they, when they gave that report to my father, just basically letting him know, hey, you don't have much time. Hey, the, the, you know, we're sorry about this, but this is how this is gonna go down and it's not gonna be good. When they were saying this, they were informing him and their intention was not to hurt him and their intention was not that of harm. So there are sometimes, and these are good educated people, sometimes the enemy will use, will use people with good intentions that mean well, but are not filled with the Spirit of God, can only see in one dimension, are not able to see in the spirit realm, are not able to hear from God, are not able to speak that or have the freedom to speak life over you. And so Satan is able to use those words to discourage you, to twist you from the inside out, to make you think that the enemy is stronger, more powerful, and he is not, and he is not. David over and over says, God, you are my strength. You're the one who takes care of me. Take care of my enemies and do this and this and that. And we can send the hounds of heaven to attack the enemy in our lives that is attacking us. I hope that you get some unction in you, some unction, some fight in you. Come on now. We got to fight in the spirit. We got to go after the enemy. We are in a war, okay? We are in an army. And so I hope that you can go to the war room where strategy takes place, where you can strategize, when you can hear Holy Spirit and you and Holy Spirit are praying as one to God the Father. And even Jesus, the Word of God says, Jesus prays for us. He intercedes on our behalf. I hope that you get that, that you understand that. Look at this Creator God. Look at all He has done for us. The fact that He has created this magnificent place for us just to merely enjoy, for us to look and to say, wow, God is good, God is real, God is powerful. He went to great lengths to show Himself to us, to show and, and, and give us His love letter to us. This is what this is. Well, I'm glad that you came. I hope that you stayed even though the waves are rough and the waves are loud. My prayer is that you went through Psalm 59. And if for you, you're going, I don't understand. I don't understand this commitment that you have to read the Psalms. What is the point of all of this? The point is that this is how we walk with God. We stay in His Word. But you wouldn't understand that if you haven't encountered Jesus. <laughs> My prayer is that you encounter this Jesus. The one who walked on the water, the one who came to earth to be a completely human and completely God, to show us, to empathize with us. It's not a God that was far off, a God that humbled himself to come to us so that he could make a way for us back to God. With his blood on the cross that he shed, he died a horrible death, took on everybody's sin, so that you could really go before God as a holy person. But how can you say I'm holy? You have no idea the sins, the things that I've done. Well, let me tell you that it doesn't matter because Jesus' blood covers them all. And when God looks at you, he sees the blood of his son. If you call out on the name of Jesus, he covers you. Surrender yourself. Surrender yourself at the foot of the cross and say, I receive that. I believe. I accept the gift that you gave me. And I believe in you, Jesus. Allow him to take that heart of stone, the heart 
like these rocks. You know, these are volcanic rocks, so some of them you step on and they get crumpled. But some of our hearts are really hard, are really just, man, only the Lord can go in there and repair it, can go in there and remove it, actually. He doesn't fix it. He makes it new. He puts in a new heart. And you get filled with the Holy Spirit and God becomes your Father. My prayer is that you make Jesus the Lord of your life, that you become a child of God, that you get filled with the Holy Spirit and you start running hard after the coming after Jesus. Following Jesus is an adventure, okay? Lord only knows, God only knows the places that he desires to take you. Well, praise God, have a wonderful Thursday!